Hello, everyone. Welcome to our engineering virtual visit today. I'm just going to wait a few moments just so everyone can hop on and then we will get started. All right, so people are hopping on gradually, but we will get started with our engineering virtual visit today. So hello, everyone. My name is Sarah. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a recent graduate of Berkeley, so I just actually graduated and I studied architecture while I was at Berkeley and I'm from the Bay Area, so I've been around here for quite a while. Um, and I did want to just thank all of you for tuning in today to watch our engineering virtual visit, especially because of everything that's happening in the world right now. We as a community really want you to know that we acknowledge the challenges and pain stemming from everything going on and we do stand with you and I did want to invite you to read our chancellor's message on news.berkeley.edu to figure out more about how we as a community are responding and um, what we stand for and how we're taking action so again thank you so much for joining us and we will get started with our engineering virtual visit so a little bit of housekeeping before we begin this engineering visit is a 40 to 45 minute presentation. So feel free to type any questions that you have in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, there also will be a bunch of a few polls that we will send out throughout the presentation. So feel free to answer those just to give us a better idea of who we're talking to today. And then this session will be recorded, but there's a different virtual visit available on our website um, if you wanna you know, rewatch any of the information that you get today. So this is an engineering overview, which means that there's different material than our regular virtual visit. So this is not really a substitute for our general virtual, general virtual visit. If you wanna get more information about the whole campus, safety, housing, um, more about all of the academic opportunities at Berkeley, I definitely encourage you to check that virtual visit out. But this one will be centered around engineering specifically. So it is from the student perspective, which means that there is no admissions or financial aid info. But if you do have questions about that, we are more than happy to refer you to the right place so we can answer those questions. And then, as always, we will end with a Q&A after the presentation. So it'll round out our hour long visit and we will do our best to answer questions that you sent out throughout the presentation. So with that, I will pass it along to our two ambassadors. We have Stacy and Casey. Take it away. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, everyone. My name is Stacy. I use the she, her, hers pronoun series. I'm from Palos Verdes, California, which is in Los Angeles. I'm currently a rising junior studying molecular environmental biology, which is in the Rouser College of Natural Resources. Although I'm not in the College of Engineering, I have been trained for this tour and I have a lot of friends in the College of Engineering that's told me all about their personal experiences. Outside of academics, I am in a lot of dance organizations on campus, as well as Greek life and in, or, or in an organization called MCBC DNA, which is a student group that helps biology students around the community. Now on to Casey. Cool, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Casey. I am a rising senior. I use the pronouns he, him, his. I'm also from like the LA area, so Long Beach, California. I'm majoring in chemistry, which is in the College of Chemistry. And just like Stacy, I'm not personally in the College of Engineering, but a lot of my friends are. And actually, my housemate is chemical engineering. So if you're interested in chemical engineering, I'll tell you a lot about that. Um, and also, some of my involvement on campus uh, is the UC Rally Committee. It's like our spirit group on campus. I'm very spirited. As you can see, I have a neon cal sign. So very spirited. I'll tell you all about that. I'm also a part of Golden Bear Orientation, orientation here at Berkeley, which is going to be different this year because it's all online. Um, cal student philanthropy philanthropy, eating it up, and then also I am sports, just working out and staying fit. And so that is a little bit about me. Thank you, Casey. After the tour, you really need to tell me where you got that sign. <laughs> so first, we want to first welcome you to UC Berkeley. We want to give you a very warm, vibrant, virtual welcome. Um, as you can see in front of you, a poll just popped up asking, who are you? So if you can fill that out so Casey and I can gauge who is on this tour today, that would be excellent. And so now while you're filling that out, some um, photos I want to highlight for you in front of you. Over on your left, you see our Division I football team in our California Memorial State stadium that seats 63,000 people, all hopefully in blue and gold. In the middle, we have our 300 foot uh, uh, bell and clock tower, also known as the Campanile, which is an iconic landmark on campus. And finally, on our right, um, you see the Memorial Glade, which has a few students just, you know, reading a book, listening to music um, in front of the Doe Memorial Library. 
And so now looking at our poll results, we see that the majority of you are high school seniors with some high school juniors as well and a family member. Um, welcome. I remember I was just in your position a couple years ago. And so it's really exciting that you're here today. And although it is unfortunate you cannot join us on our physical campus, Casey and I are so excited to tell you all we know about the school, specifically about the College of Engineering. And so now onto the agenda, which um, goes over what we'll be talking about in this tour today. So first we're gonna start with an overview of Berkeley that goes over the history of Berkeley, as well as the current uh, climate, as well as population in the College of Engineering. We'll talk about the academic overview, including our five undergraduate colleges. We'll go into engineering information, um, which will go into depth about our 11 majors in the College of Engineering. Then we'll go on to student life and resources, labs, maker spaces, research, and finally, we'll talk about some notable alumni in, um, from the College of Engineering. Okie dokie, so to start off, I can talk a little bit about the history and establishment of Berkeley. So we were founded back in 1868, and back then we were the only UC, we were the first of the nine undergraduate colleges. Um, that, was, that was because President Abraham Lincoln signed an act called the Morrill Land Grant Act, they gave California land for universities. So Berkeley's happened to be the very first one. And we went by the name University of California. It wasn't until later when um, UCLA popped up and UCI and UC Davis, when they all popped up, we then went by the name Berkeley. And then currently we still go by the name Cal, just C-A-L, because we were one of the first. You could call us UCB, but we don't really like it. It's not really like the one we go by, but you know, it, it could work. Um, our mascot is the golden bear. Um, you'll see him come up on a few of the other slides. He's not a ferocious bear. He's more of like a huggable, cuddly kind of bear i would hope you would call him cuddly his name's oski um over here that's like a picture of oski even though he looks a lot different in person and then our campus size so we have just over thirty-one thousand undergraduate students and of that just shy of four four grand of them are um engineers and then we have just under twelve thousand um graduate students with just over two thousand of those being engineering graduate students so a sizable chunk of campus is engineers Thank you. So now before we go into depth about our College of Engineering, we're first going to go over an overview of the five undergraduate colleges in the university. And so first we have, of course, our College of Engineering, which has 11 majors. We have our College of Chemistry, which only has three majors, one of them being Chemical Engineering. And we have our College of Letters and Sciences, Rouser College of Natural Resources, woo, and College of Environmental Design. And so before we go on, I like to talk a little bit about applying directly versus transferring. When you do apply to the university, you do choose um, to apply to one of these five undergraduate colleges. So, you know, if you're interested in college in engineering, you would apply to the College of Engineering. If you're interested in philosophy, you would apply to the College of Letters and Sciences. Now, in terms of transferring, it is doable. However, it is very difficult, um, uh, specifically um, in transferring into the College of Engineering and College of Chemistry. So relatively speaking, if you do want to study a major in a College of Engineering, um, we would recommend that you apply to the College of Engineering directly because you may not have the opportunity to transfer into the College of Engineering, being that it is difficult. Um, however, we do have advisors um, in all colleges that are ready to answer any questions that you have about um, if you do want to, you know, transfer into a different college, maybe if you want to transfer out of the College of Engineering and College of Chemistry. Yeah, and just to add on what Stacy said, I can attest to the fact that it is difficult to transfer in. I started out my life in the College of Letters and Science Chemistry, and I transferred into the College of Chemistry Chemistry. That was a difficult process. Doable, like just like Stacey said, it's doable, but like very difficult, just better off just applying directly to start. Um, but so now we can enter into the College of Engineering. So here's a brief overview of the College of Engineering, the little mission statement there. To tra transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. Overall, with the College of Engineering, we are ranked number three in the world. So it's a highly ranked engineering program. And the best way I can talk about it is just, you, you can definitely tell it's a highly ranked program. You go there and you're, it's a, a lot of um, uh, awesome faculty and professors. And it's just, you know, when you get there, you know the experiences, the experiences you're being taught and like everything you're, you're learning there is just top notch. I, that's all I can really say about it. Just 
you go there, don't expect to kind of like get easy, easy A's because it's not easy A's. You really go have to sit and study and learn. You learn a lot in college of engineering, just to kind of an overview of it. Um, so in some of the culture, so change makers and challenging the status quo, I believe Berkeley is one of the top universities for startups. So a lot of students will come to Berkeley and they kind of end up making their own startup. And so like, again, change makers and, cha and challenging the status quo in that way by being startups, entrepreneurship as well. Um, also research and innovation. There's plenty of research available in the Bay Area and Berkeley is um, nicely situated right in the Bay. So you can have a lot of access to research and also um, programs are offered even around the world for research and for internships. Then moving on to community, compassion, passion, and social justice, spirit and pride, diversity and excellence. And that's more of just like the whole campus side, the whole Berkeley side of everything where you try really hard, to, like people really fight for what they believe in, whether, whether it's um, about academic or not about academic, like social justice, they all fight for what they believe in and they're all very um, spirited. Like I mentioned, I'm very much into Cal spirits. So I have all these Cal things, but and people are very spirited about everything they have. So they can move on. Yes, we are all very passionate about what we're studying in as about our values. Um, so now moving on to an academic overview of the College of Engineering. So a poll just popped up asking, what are you interested in, in terms of um, the majors in the College of Engineering, as well as, you know, chemical engineering. And so now, um, as you can see in front of you, there's a very nice colorful pie chart that basically shows the percentage of the engineering students in each of the um, 11 majors. A little another fun fact, um, all of our programs are ranked in the top nine globally. That's amazing. In terms of switching majors, so I talked a little bit about transferring into colleges. However, switching majors is also very difficult. Um, that being said, it is doable if you talk to your advisor. Um, however, specifically, um, transferring into electrical engineering computer science is um, more difficult. And that is because for each major, there is a specific prerequisite courses as well as a curricul curriculum that you do follow. And so if you do want to switch, you know, um, in the middle of your college career, it can be difficult to fulfill all those requirements in the time that you um, need to graduate. In terms of postgraduate paths, so this is a um, question that I definitely asked myself when I was deciding my major, and a lot of students do, especially prospective students, what will I do after I graduate? And so we only listed a couple paths here, but you can work directly in a job and as well as like in the industry right after you graduate. A lot of students choose to do that, whether that be, you know, um, working in a startup, creating their own startup, or um, working in a company that is all like definitely that is definitely a path that is common for um, graduating students you can also go to graduate school which is another very popular option i have a friend who finished her undergraduate um, degree in nuclear engineering and then went on to do a one-year master's program again in uc berkeley to then get her master's in nuclear engineering and now works in an energy company and so she really got that time to focus on um, what on that particular um, topic and subject in um, nuclear engineering. And finally, there's also research. You can conduct research. You can be a part of a research project. Um, that's also something that's very popular amongst undergraduates. And I will talk a little bit about that um, later in the tour. So now, so, now, so now, excuse me, looking at the poll, we see that a lot of us are electrical engineering computer science majors, which totally makes sense. If you look at the pie chart, that is a very large part of the pie. Um, and then, we have a few in material science, mechanical engineering, some kind of engineering cool, and chemical E. So um, that's really great. We'll be talking about each major now more in depth. So you'll all get the opportunity to learn a little bit more about your major. Neat. And so no, what better way to start about learning about engineering than to talk about engineering undeclared. So engineering undeclared, you can actually come into the College of Engineering as undeclared. Um, just a caveat though, it is very difficult because once you come in, you then declare your engineering major, whichever major it turns out to be, nuclear, bioengineering, mechanical, um, electrical engineering, com computer science, no matter what it is, you will declare by your fourth semester. So you take introductory seminars in order to decide which, ma which um, engineering major you would like. And then once you um, apply or once you declare a major, you kind of have that major. So since you have all that free range of like whatever you would like to pick, it's a very sought after major. So usually it's a good idea to figure out what you might want to major in before you apply to Berkeley. And then that gets a little bit easy, I mean, easier, I would say. But um, engineering undeclared is definitely a pathway, but just it is very difficult. I know it's a difficult decision deciding what you want to major and do for your rest of your life at the age of 18, but 
you know, welcome to college. Um, then moving on, we have nuclear engineering as, and also bioengineering. I saw that there weren't any nuclear or bioengineering in minded people here, but I'll still talk about it a little bit. So the nuclear engineering, there's, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of research available in the Bay Area and they do do a lot of research on campus and also off campus with nuclear engineering where they learn about energy and radiation. And they also learn about like electrical power, how, like, how to make um, energy out of radiation, how to create like medical isotopes, how to even transfer um, nuclear products or waste or anything, like a shipping containers for it. So they definitely learn how to just control and like how to like, make nuclear engineering, like, you know, work for them. Um, then we have bioengineering. So bioengineering, again, plenty of research. Um, with biomedicals, information technology, genetics, um, basically the way I would, I would put it is they apply engineering mind engineering mindset to like a biological system or like biomedical technologies just kind of in order to have to, to make technology work with the human body or how to like implement technology into biological systems so bio biology and engineering are like really the crossroads just like the name suggests that's the crossroads for all of it um and then with the pictures listed that's just Echeverry, which is for nuclear engineering the bottom right is Stanley for bioengineering so if you ever happen to visit campus and you want to know more about those two particular majors there they are right there those little earth yeah, it's mirrored for me. So those little pictures are for you. Stanley Hall has a very great cafe called Yali's Cafe um, that I used to go to all the time after my lectures. So great place. Um, so moving on, now we have industrial engineering and operations research, which is studying complex systems operation and making and a focus in making processes more effective, efficient, and safe that um, can go towards infrastructure, that can go towards machinery. I like to think about it like this because um, actually, I actually didn't know what industrial engineering operations research was, but someone really explained it uh, really well to me. It's like in amusement parks, there are a lot of industrial engineering and operations research. That's a long, um, that's a long name. So I'm going to say IEOR for sure. There's a lot of IEOR employees making sure that um, the roller coasters are safe, um, they're um, space effective and cost efficient and making sure that, you know, no one, like it's a smooth riding roller coaster and it's also really fun and, um, you know, makes the heart rate go up a little bit. We have material science and engineering, which is specific towards desirable material properties in terms of their function, environmental impact, feasibility and cost. And so material scientists are really looking at the resources that go into products. So an example would be like in packaging. Um, there's a lot of material scientists making sure that the resource that's going into packaging is not only, you know, um, cost efficient for companies, but is also environmentally friendly, so it won't be really wasteful to the environment, as well as very efficient in terms of making sure, you know, its weight is good when it is traveling to certain places and um, all of that and making sure it's not toxic as well. Yeah, and talking about material science and engineering, my mom just got some brand new dining room table chairs and they really need some more material science and engineers there because the amount of packaging for like a single chair, good Lord. Anyway, moving on. Um, so I can talk about civil and environmental engineering. So mo I, I know a few, a few of my friends are civil engineers and the way I describe it is they will get so excited if they like, make a bridge and it only flexes ever so much, they get so happy. Like it's, they're so in love with um, civil engineering where they learn about data, natural environments and structures. So kind of making sure the structure you know, can can uh, stand on its own and making sure it doesn't like hurt the environment while building it. It's like very, um, not cost effective. I mean, it is cost effective, but also so it doesn't like uh, um, impact the environment drastically when they build it or where they build it. Um, also sustainability, it would stay standing for a very long time. They're not, don't ha they don't have to rebuild it every 10, 15 years. So they um, are even 20 years. I don't know how long buildings stand. Um, but yeah, so civil engineers, they really, really are on um, the, in love with what they do. Um, there's also the top right, the top left picture, excuse me, um, is the Cal Steel Bridge team where a lot of civil en engineers join and they literally just make a steel bridge and they get really excited when it bends. They go to nationals. I think like the past few years, we went to nationals for our steel bridge teams. They're, they're that much in love with, with um, uh, civil engineering. So really great program. A lot of my friends love it. Um, the mechanical engineering. So mechanical engineering, it's very multi multidisciplinary um, major just because there's so many different asset, um, facets that you can go into for mechanical engineering, like robotics or like computer um, engineering or how to like, you know, make computers do, I can build like computer science to it, but um, making computers do what you want to do mechanically, like um, automated transportation, 
just basically anything that has a moving part, you could learn about it or you will learn about it in mechanical engineering. So that's why it's multi multidisciplinary and there's plenty of projects you'll work on in order to make sure you go into which mechanical engineering you want because there's just so many, so many things in mechanical engineering. Also material and machine design and applications. So again, then you actually make little prototypes. There's a little metal making shop and like a prototype shop on campus. You can go and make a prototype to see how things would work, 3D print things, you know, to make sure it all go operates the way you want it to operate. So that's mechanical engineering. I know there's a few of you guys out there. So yeah, multidisciplinary, look it up. Um, and then the pictures are again, steel bridge, top right and bottom left are for mechanical engineering. And the bottom right is actually some environmental engineering research. So they do go out into the field and kind of take, take data or um, collect data for the environment when they're out. So that's like kind of an environmental part tagged onto civil and environmental engineering. Yeah, the workshop area for the Cal um, Steel Bridge team is in Davis Hall and it's so cool to look at. Like anyone can basically go in the building and like look at the entire lab and it's really cool. Um, moving on to our engineering science, which is another one of our engineering majors. Um, it's actually not as common as a program around um, like the, um, the, the uh, country. So, you know, UC Berkeley has one, so great. Um, there's engineer, uh, energy engineering, engineering mathematics and statistics, engineering physics, and environmental engineering science. And so these programs have a specific focus in green technology, energy systems, sciences, math, biology, and physics. And so this program is very interdisciplinary in terms of its studies. So you do take a very large, wide range of engineering classes, as well as the classes that, you know, are... Um, with that engineering um, within that program that you choose. So for example, the engineering mathematics and statistics. So besides the engineering, um, the engineering classes you take, you also take a very large range in the mathematics and statistics, which are, isn't necessarily in the College of Engineering. And so with this uh, specific program, it's more of the theoretical and research side of the engineering rather than the actual more application based. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you know, the research side, um, then this program is perfect for you. Well, and then we can jump into the meat of this, um, where a lot of you guys are interested in electrical engineering, computer science. So this is the final one, one of the majors within the College of Engineering. So the electrical engineering, computer science, I'm going to attempt to call it EECS. I usually try to call it by some acronym, but most of the time I just kind of jump over and just call it um, electrical engineering, computer science again. But let's call it EECS. Um, so with EECS, there's a lot, definitely a lot of technical problem solving. There's a lot of projects that you work on with your friends or even just if, you're not, if they're not your friends, your classmates, um, where you just work and you like would write a code, you'd run it through the system. I, I'm not an EECS major, but you'd write a code and you like, I see if it works and you like problem solve it or um, time out, problem, Problem solve, I guess. Again, just making sure the code would work. Um, figure out all the div all, all the um technical um wrong. I can't find the word. Um, there's a word for it. I'm forgetting it. Anywho, you have to work with with a lot of with a lot of people to kind of um, um troubleshoot. That's the word. Troubleshoot the, um the code. Um, sorry, brain fart. Um, then there's collaboration in industry. So again, there's um a, a lot of um uh, group projects, and you can actually go into the industry. My um freshman roommates, they're both um EECS majors, and one of them actually is interning at Google now. He's like a top-notch kid, so highly recommend him. He's so harsh. Um, and then um, a computer-aided design, again, EECS majors, they kind of make computers do their bidding. That's the way that I would describe it. They really do get into the whole problem solving of all of it. Um, I learned about quantum, um, uh, molecular, and uh, optical electronic circuits. So basically, again, how a computer is made. And then the next slide is really great at kind of comparing both EECS and electrical engineering, or EECS and computer science. So with EECS, it is both hardware and software integration. So you kind of focus on how a computer is made and how this part then translates to how the computer describes it or how the computer presents it versus with computer science it is just software focused um, because we also do have the computer science major. I should have mentioned that. Uh, yeah, I do have a, a, just a computer science major. It, a, it is a BA and it's offered in the College of Letters of Science while EECS is a BS offered in the College of Engineering. And like Stacy mentioned at the very beginning about applying it directly or not, um, with the College of Engineering, you should have applied directly into it, especially to get EECS, because it is uh, possible to transfer into um, EECS afterward. It's very, very, very difficult. Um, and then with College of Letters and Science, again, it is undeclared admission. So if you apply the College of Letters and Science, you come in as undeclared. And then with like, intending to do computer science, and at the end of your um, fourth semester, usually uh, whenever you reach about 70 units, you then declare computer science. So it's a little bit easier, but like, again, not easier. It's just It's a different pathway. Um, then there's also, again, um, computer science is software focused. Um, and the reason that computer science is a BA is because it's in the College of Letters of Science and College of Letters of Science has seven breadth courses. So you take seven different breadths to kind of get a full range of um, 
information, a full, um, a full range of knowledge versus um, electrical engineering, computer science just has four breadth courses. So you have like just um, basically a more of just like math and physics requirements. So that's why it's more of a BS versus it's a BA for computer science. But computer science, even though it is like an easier one, or not easier, but like, you know, it's a different pathway. Um, it is still an impact in major. So you do need to have a, keep up a pretty nice GPA of like a 3.3 and you need to take some core on um, the uh, computer science classes in order to get in. But with that, that's kind of like the comparison between EECS and computer science. And although there are differences, there are a lot of similarities in terms of courses. Like my roommate was a CS major um, my freshman year, and she was taking a electrical engineering course that uh, both majors do have to take. And I remember one day she came back to the room with a Nutella box and I was like, ooh, Nutella. But inside it was a robot she made. So you still get that hands-on experience, even if you're not necessarily in EECS. Cool, so now for some other opportunities. We have joint majors, which is when you can actually major in two majors in the College of Engineering. Um, and you do actually take a smaller workload for both of those majors in order to complete uh, both degrees. That being said, when you uh, looked at the pie chart, it was a very, very small percentage because it's very difficult to do. So keep that in mind. A poll just popped up in front of you asking, where are you joining us from? So if you could fill that out, that'd be awesome. Um, in term, <laughs> thank you, Casey. Um, so in terms of other opportunities, we have minors, which are um, actually a very popular option for students who are not in the College of Engineering, who want to study a discipline in the College of Engineering. I have a friend who is a molecular cellular biologist, and she's actually also minoring in EECS. So that's also very popular if you don't want to necessarily take on a full major. We have certificates, which I actually didn't know existed until recently, and they're, um, they're a little less rigorous than minors, so you take less courses, um, but you do get a certificate in like design innovation or entrepreneurship and technology, and it's just a great way to complement your degree if you want to study more about um, like, you know, entrepreneurship or design. Then we have our management entrepreneurship and technology program, which is long for MET, which is a program that is a dual degree um, that brings in one of the majors in the College of Engineering and a business degree. And getting those degrees individually is very difficult and rigorous. And so this program allows you to get those two degrees in four years. Um, it is more competitive. Um, however, if you do not get into the program, you will be reviewed under the major that you selected in the College of Engineering. So if you do really want to study both disciplines, like by all means apply because you can't get into the MET program once you're in the school. And so now looking at the poll results, we see that, wow, the majority of us are actually in the um, East Coast. That's great. Uh, welcome. And then we have some, you know, California. We have, please, we have people from all over the place, including one student who's international. Welcome. Neat. And sorry for kind of jumping ahead of, there, of, of you, Stacey, and jumping to this page. I'm just so excited to talk about College of Chemistry because, yeah, chemistry. Um, but yeah, so the College of Chemistry, I saw there are a few chemical engineers interested. So you guys have the right major. You have the right mindset right there. Um, I mean, I'm only a little biased. Um, but so uh, College of Chemistry is about 1,000 students. And again, you would apply directly into the College of um, Chemistry. You can transfer into the College of Chemistry, but take it from me, it's very difficult to do. Um, me and my friend managed to do it, but my other friend did not manage to do it. So take so just know that um, it is ranked number one globally for um, chemistry though so it's a very very great thing love chemistry there are three majors chemistry chemical biology and chemical engineering so again if you are interested in engineering in engineering of chemistry it's in college of college of chemistry um the reason being is because it's not called engineering of chemistry it's called chemical engineering because chemistry comes first in the name it's in the college of chemistry just kind of think 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 of it that way um also there have been 16 elements discovered at berkeley i am wearing one of them berkelium um, and then we have californium, cyborgium, laurentium, plutonium, a bunch of other eums. So there's plenty of other eums that have been discovered here at Berkeley, 16 of them total. And so it's just a very great college for chemistry. And this picture right here is just one of the um, labs you have at Berkeley. This is called Latimer Hall. Uh, actually, a lot of our labs at Berkeley, a lot of like the research labs are actually underground. And that's because it's kind of nice and cool down there. It's like a little space management. There are also like undergraduate labs where you just kind of take for your classes are above ground, but a lot of it is below ground. And then with chemical engineering, you can't, you do take a lot of classes within the College of Engineering and the College of Chemistry. You can like even um, overlap, I think, um, engineering um, 
requirements or not requirements engineering on like electives you can like overlap so you go from our from like the college of chemistry to the college of engineering to actually right across the street from each other so they're very close like your whole your kind of home of chemistry is also right next to engineering kind of bounce back and forth yeah i also got to take chemistry classes for my major and it's such a great college i promise um i thought i would hate organic chemistry because i've never taken chem before i came to berkeley but the college of chemistry is such a great place where um, resources are really there available to help you um so now on to our structure and class sizes so we have um, lectures, sections, and labs. So let me break that down. Lectures are the classes that, uh, or the, the, yeah, the classes that professors teach and they like to lecture. That's why it's called lecture. <laughs> um, and um, these generally are larger in your prerequisite courses. So the courses that, you know, multiple majors take at the same time in order to declare your major. Also, um, obviously in college engineering, you're already declared. So it is uh, different, but it is courses like CS61A, which not only like EECS students take, but computer science courses students take, some data science majors take, etc. Um, however, when you get, you know, um, up to the upper divisions, they are smaller. We have sections which are with your lecture courses. They actually are adjacent to your lecture courses and they have 15 to 20 students generally. They're definitely on the smaller size and they are taught by a graduate student instructor, also known as a GSI, who is hired by the professor who will then, you know, review the course material with you, answer any questions you have that you don't necessarily want to ask your professor during lecture. We also have labs, which are my favorite part of the, um, of the courses I take. They're generally around 15 to 20 students, so they're more like focused. Um, and basically you get that hands-on experience. I personally have never taken a lab besides chemistry. However, I have a lot of friends, like my roommate, for instance, who took EE16A and EE16B, which is electrical engineering focused. And she got a really like make voice automated machine like robots, which is really cool. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, labs in mechanical engineering as well in terms of robotics, um, et cetera. And then with these lectures and labs and, you know, your GSI and professor, they host office hours, which is a time where you can really like go up and like meet your professor and ask any questions, not only about the class, but about any current research they're doing or about, you know, they're just like who they are. Uh, which is really great and I my biggest regret is not taking advantage of office hours earlier in my college career. So now in terms of class size, I already mentioned this already, it is dependent on major. Um, you know, nuclear engineering is a very small major and therefore the classes generally tend to be smaller in comparison to like electrical engineering computer science. Um, we have eye clickers, which um, are just an example of how they take attendance and lecture as well as to how to keep you more um, engaged. And you basically have this cool little machine. I wish I had mine with me right now. And you pick certain answers. They're generally, they're multiple choice, of course. Um, and you get to see what your peers answer, how your peers answered, as well as, you know, get to test yourself, quiz yourself in a more of a low key, um, less stressful setting. And then we have in-class interaction as well. A lot of professors like to show, you know, maybe like certain experiments as well as, you know, students like to just ask questions in front of 500 students. I don't know how people do that, but I know a lot of uh, students who do that. And so it's definitely doable and um, students really like to take advantage of that. In terms of resources, if you wanted to like uh, review your course material or like go back and learn, there's the Student Learning Center, which is a tutoring site with students who are who've taken the course before who are hired to like um, help you with the class that you're taking we have our engineering student services which is specific towards engineering students and it's a place where um, engineering students actually get a tutor other engineering students and then we have our four-year academic advisors which like advising is so helpful I promise you, I figured out what I wanted to do because of my advisor. She really like mapped that out for me. And it's a, uh, advisors are a great a source to use if you wanna make sure you're on track to graduate in the particular time that you wanna graduate in, as well as to explore options you have about, um, you know, career paths or about like the major you're in. Yeah, I can also attest to the fact that the academic advisors are amazing. Um, one thing though at Berkeley is that you, you do have to kind of find them because there are so many students that they have to like to, um, uh, meet with or kind of like, you know, there's so many students they advise over. But once you meet with them and once you like, go out of your way to find them, 
they are great. Highly recommend. Um, and so now jumping into student diversity. So there are a lot of clubs, so many more than listed here. I think one of my, my friends, another one of the clubs is not listed here. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but it's not listed here. Um, but so there are a lot of clubs and a lot of places for students to kind of reach out and be a part of others, a part of groups that they like to, um, uh, they just want to be a part of. Um, one of them is the Women in Science and Engineering theme program. So if you jump on one of our actual um, normal, just um, uh, overview tour of Berkeley, we talk about housing and in the housing, um, there's actually an um, option of a theme program. A theme program is just uh, you live with like-minded individuals or people who identify the same. I know there's like an LGBTQ theme program, an African-American theme program, a one, a one that's a total like waste-free, like an environmental theme program, and a one for women in science and engineering. So that's, that's another theme program. Um, we also have the Black Engineering and Science Students Association. They always mix up the words. Um, so BESA, you can, so if, you're, if you identify with any of that, you can jump into that group and just like, study or just be with people this of like-minded um hispanic engineers and scientists eop stem um pre-engineering program plenty of programs all available um i know there's not i don't think there's gonna be a picture of the actual location but there's also the um cesar chavez center cesar chavez center has a lot of some just uh, just it's just a center for students if they want to kind of join some clubs or kind of like feel you know if they want if they're having a hard time at berkeley and they want to like meet some meet, meet some people and join um, the clubs that are like fighting for the same things they fight for or just be a part of people um, a part of a group, they can go there. But those are some of the ones that are engineering focused. And as you can see the picture, there's just plenty of spaces for students to interact and meet people. Also bottom right is Kresge Library. That's one of the engine, that is the engineering library. We have 24 libraries and that's the engineering one. And I highly recommend that one, great. Yes, lots of um, student life on campus. So now we're going on to the clubs and competitions. And so I would go into every single one of these clubs. However, that would take a very long time. Um, and not only is it is there these clubs listed in front of you, but there's also clubs, there's also way more clubs. Like in general, UC Berkeley has over 1,200 clubs. And so um, there's definitely more than just listed here. However, these are the more popular ones. Um, that being said, there's also a lot of opportunities to join clubs that are not necessarily engineering focused, which I know personally as a dancer, I meet a lot of students who are in college engineering. And so just to list some of them out loud, we have Cal Soul, Cal Steel Bridge Team, Berkeley, Berkeley Formula Racing, which is a group that actually gets to build race cars and test them out. Biomedical Engineering Society, Society of Women and Engineers, Cal Hacks, uh, which is one of the more popular events on campus. I know all my friends will get so hyped for Cal Hacks. <laughs> Pioneers in Engineering, and of course, Department Honor Societies. And so once again, just listing a few, however, um, if you want more information about that, you can definitely ask the question or you can look them up online um, because a lot of these clubs do have their own website that are created by students. Yep, and so now we can talk about some labs and maker spaces that are offered at Berkeley and also just available for students, whether it's engineering or not. Um, but one of them is the Saturjadai Hall. They have the Citrus Center. Citrus stands for the Center of Institute and Technology research in the interest of society i believe i got that acronym correct um but all i can say about citrus is it's a very cool little center where students can they tackle problems in society and kind of present um, solutions to it they kind of make little prototypes of what they would like the solution to look like or how they would like you know i guess advance society is again in the interest of society um and the one thing i can remember from it is that it's like a little museum you can go and walk around and see the um, different projects one of them was headphones and they have cat ears on them and the reason being is that if you're listening to music in your headphones and you want everyone else to hear what the music is, like you're trying to share the music, you can have it blast out of the cat ears, like out of the speakers in the cat ears. They didn't have to make it look like cat ears, but they made it look like cat ears. And that's why I love it so much. Um, then we also have Jacobs Hall. Jacobs Hall has the Jacobs Institute for Design and Innovation. I actually took a decal, which stands for Democratic Education at Cal. There's just classes taught by students. I took a decal about 3D printing in the Jacobs Institute. So that was actually a pretty cool little the story of my, part of my life. Um, and again, you learn 3D design and you can actually 3D prints. Um, also a makerspace, I believe, is in Jacobs Hall along with, I think it's Hesse Hall. Yeah, Hesse Hall is the, the machine shop. So there's a makerspace in Jacobs Hall where you can just, even if you're not an engineering student, you can go and um, make things in the makerspace. Um, you, and again, uh, that's, I think they're off offering virtual trainings now for Jacobs Halls. So that's a cool thing if you even, even when you're remote learning, you can virtual training and how to do it all. Um, Hesse Hall is for mechanical engineering. And again, they have the machine shop in there. So it's like, like I was saying, if you need to make a prototype or you just need to like 
you know, work with metal. They have a machine shop there. You can go and just kind of piece things together, work with it. Um, Davis Hall is, that's the home to civil engineering. I think Stacy brought it up at the very beginning or somewhere in the tour, or maybe I'm just losing it. Um, but you talked about um, the Davis Hall having the construction bay. And so the construction bay, it is the largest construction bay in the Bay Area. Um, the first floor doesn't exist at all. The entire first floor's sole purpose is to support the second floor. And the second floor, that's where all the magic happens. Um, it is a cut through, so like say, say, uh, she definitely said this tour. You can go into the hall and see the whole makerspace, or not the makerspace, see the whole construction bay. And you can actually, like, there's a huge crane that moves around, like the steel bridge they work, they um, uh, build there. And it just, it's a very cool little site if you can ever, ever go outside again. Um, but a cool thing to note is that the part of the Golden Gate Bridge and parts of the Bay Bridge have been tested in the construction bay at Berkeley. So that's kind of cool, like the Bay Bridge and the Golden Gate Bridge have had some, some life starting up at Ber in Berkeley. And then we have the Richmond Field Station. So we're in Berkeley, but uh, just about a 15, 20 minute drive, we have the Richmond Field Station where students can go out and kind of like, I know the Formula Racing Team and the Cal Soul, they have um, some spaces out in the Richmond Field Station. It's basically just another station, like a actual research station out in Richmond, kind of like on the cliffs a little bit um, that you can just go and do some research or you can like, again, have some, um, you can go again, research labs, um, or you can even have your, um, your club out there. And with the pictures uh, galore, Davis Hall is that one on the bottom left. Sadly, there's no inside picture, but that you can kind of see there's not that many windows because it's all just a giant construction bay. So it's a huge, you wouldn't really see much other than the giant crane. Um, but yeah. Thank you. So now we're on to research. I love research. Um, so first we have our undergraduate research apprenticeship program, which is actually school wide. So even if you're not in the college of engineering, you can apply. I have plenty of friends who have done research under this program. And it's basically just a like a website where you look at all these proposed um, these um, faculty initiated proposals and basically what they're doing in terms of research and you then get to apply and um, join and possibly join their team. They read your application, which is generally a statement of interest, and then they ask for an interview, and then you can, you know, participate in their research, which is really cool. Um, next is Beehive, which is similar to undergraduate research apprenticeship program. However, it's specific towards college of engineering students. We have our Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, which is literally just um, a bus ride, which is around 10 to 15 minutes. Um, up at the top of the hill in Berkeley. Um, and it's a, a great laboratory. They're always looking for help. So a lot of students like to just contact the faculty who are working in the lab. Now we have our Sudarsha Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. There's the Collider Cup. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but I think it's Collider Club. And it's basically a competition where students actually get to collaborate and create, um, create these uh, designs in terms of like machines and robots and then someone wins cool and then we have our undergrad and professional programs and research so uh, you could definitely reach out to the center to see if there's any openings yeah i have not done any research myself personally but a lot of my friends that do research are very in love with them i want one chemistry friend actually he is doing research and he kind of has to learn some computer science to it. And I thought that was like, oh, you have to learn computer science. That sucks, man. He's like, no, I'm, I'm so happy. And I'm like, okay, cool, <laughs> neat. So yeah, definitely do a lot of research. Um, and then finally, we have some notable figures. I'm um, uh, just our legacy here at UC Berkeley I'm in engineering. One of them is Rude Goldberg, where he was an engineer, but the one crazy thing that you do was you could, he would make complex machines. So the best way I can describe it is with, um, if, you've got, if you've ever seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, an old like you know show with a, uh, the guy from Mary Poppins, the chimney sweep guy, I'm forgetting, no, Dick Van Dyke, that was the name. Um, but so yeah, he was in it and the way, and so he was like a Rube Goldberg type of guy where he would make this t giant complex machine all so he can crack an egg. It's just crazy things. Like you have to have, really have an engineering mindset in order to make crazy machines just to do very simple tasks. And um, then we have Dean Liu, who is a top right. And she's an instructor, researcher, administrator. She's won, a, won quite a few awards. I can't remember the award. I think she did something with a microchip for computers, if I remember correctly. Um, but so she is the very first female dean of the College of Engineering. So she's very, very, I'm um, a very great professor. She was a great um, a instructor. She's done a lot of research and she's currently still doing research. So she's a very great, very great dean. And again, the first, I'm um, a female dean. Then we have, I'm, a, I'm not pronouncing this correctly, Shafi Goldwasser. 
or yeah, Shafi Goldwasser on the bottom left, she won the Turing, the Turing Prize for computer science. I believe she did something with cooling computers or maybe cooling, maybe she did cooling microchips. I don't know, there's a lot of prizes, but I know that she won the Turing Prize because it says it right there. Um, and then finally on the bottom right, that's the one I can definitely tell you about, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. I know that one, 100%. Um, so yeah, but those are just some of the few notable alumni here at Berkeley. And I'm not here at Berkeley Engineering. And then also we are 100, we just celebrated our 150th year anniversary of the school entirely. And then three years later, we admitted women. So 150 years of women at Berkeley. And with that, right when we first admitted women, we also admitted women in engineering. So women have been in engineering this, just as long as they could, they could have been when they were admitted in Berkeley. So that is a little side thing there. And so now we can move into the Q&A and you can ask, Stacey and I can answer your question. Awesome. All right. So yes, we will move into our live questions. We've gotten a bunch of great questions. So thank you to everyone for asking. Our first one is going to be for Stacy. So someone asked, what is your experience in large lecture, lecture classes? Are graduate student instructors helpful and can you get the attention that you need? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually one of the most important questions that I asked when I first came to Berkeley, because I came from a school with a graduating class of 64 students. And so I my surprise when I walked into my first general chemistry chem 1a class with like 500 students in one of the largest lecture halls on campus I was like oh my gosh how am I going to deal with this and truth is that your graduate student instructors are so important in making sure that you have your any questions that your answer are answered as well as reviewing the material with you like usually discussion sections are actually optional um, and I know students who don't go at all and that I mean that's their choice but personally I probably really learned and prepared for my exams the most in those discussion sections. Um, I got really close to my especially my GSI or graduate yeah my GSI in my freshman year. Um, he was like a rock I went to when I like really needed support especially since it was my first semester of freshman year and so it's really there. I think a lot of the resources are are very in front of you in order to succeed and feel like um, you know, the large lectures aren't as large as you think. And it's really up to you to, you know, grab those resources to then um, utilize them to make you feel like you're um, not really necessarily in a large lecture. Awesome. All right. Thank you for that. And kind of going along the lines of academics, but also adding in extracurricular, someone asked, what are some popular engineering extracurriculars and how can I get a good balance of academic and social life at Berkeley? So Casey, you can take that one. Yeah, so I can definitely talk about the popular engineering um, electives or extracurriculars, not electives, <laughs> sorry, no. Um, but yeah, so definitely um, like the ones that we mentioned before, where they have some um, steel bridge, also concrete canoe, where they, civil engineers, or even um, material science, things material science, they make just a canoe out of concrete, concrete canoe, and they make it float. I can't, if, if, if you, even if you gave me wood, I couldn't make a go canoe that floats so they can make it out of concrete that's just amazing um so i do like to do that where they kind of take their what they're learning in class and kind of applying it into like come competition teams there's also the mechanical engineers do formula rate the F fsae i think is how they call it but i just call it like formula racing where they take a go-kart and make it into like a formula one car like with the aerodynamics and crazy stuff um so they have a, so those are definitely some of the popular ones also a steel bridge like i mentioned all my all my friends that are i'm a civil engineers are also in Steel Bridge. So that was definitely one that they all would go to, would flock to. Um, and then some other extracurriculars. I mean, there's also like the way I met my friends that are in engineering, they weren't all in engineering majors. They would all just in other random clubs like rally committee or, um, or Golden Bear Orientation. Or so they, like you is very um, popular to do uh, extracurriculars that are in your major, but you can definitely also branch out to everything else. Um, there's pl a plethora, uh, over a thousand clubs at Berkeley. So even though there are popular engineering majors, a lot of engineers also just go do other things in the world and don't just focus all on engineering. And a good way to get the balance of both um, academic and social life is, I'm, a, I'm kind of like a hypocrite by saying this, but time management. I like to procrastinate. A lot of my friends like to procrastinate, but in order to get a good balance is to have a, some great time management. Um, one thing that I do like to do though, is if I have class from eight to nine and I have class from 10 to 11, if 
from nine to 10, I do like to go just to like the chemistry library and just sit there and study for that time just because I, it's, I wouldn't want to go home or maybe I have lunch after or, or breakfast if I miss breakfast. Um, but time management, so like kind of fill up every part of your day with something to do or so you can study so that by the end of the day, if you want to go have dinner with your friends or if on the weekend you want to go to a party, you can't have time to do that. So I would say time management is the great way to get a good balance of academic and social life. Yeah, definitely a great answer. That's something that I had to develop while at Berkeley, um, 100%. So our next question um, is a great question. Someone asked, this will be for Stacy. So someone asked, which are the easiest slash least competitive majors to get into in the College of Engineering? So yeah, I would say there's not really a least competitive or easiest major in the college because, you know, the departments are constantly changing as students graduate, as students come in. And so there isn't a definite answer on that one. And that being said, you know, if you are applying to the College of Engineering, really choose or choose to apply to the college or to the major that really interests you. I think, and I could speak from experience, for example, in terms of research, there's been definitely moments where I chose a research topic, not necessarily because it was what I was passionate about. However, I definitely know the professor who was, you know, conducting that research could tell that I was not as interested as other students who were. And so that being said, my biggest advice is like, look at, or like do your research and really choose the major that you really love and that you're really passionate about. Um, if you're passionate about engineering as a whole, that's great. You can apply undeclared or you can really like take that time, you know, and uh, figure out why you're like, you know, more leaning towards a, one major or why you're leaning towards the other because once again it's there's like not really a definite answer for that and it's really up to you and it's really about you know the admissions yeah definitely great answer all right and our next question is for casey so chris asked do you have any advice for how to get into berkeley engineering as a high school senior this is a great question i'd love to talk about it on regular tours but now i can get to talk about it on engineering tours um so the one thing i would say with like some advice on how to get in um, is to kind of what I did at least is when I when I was taking classes um, in high school I took AP chemistry because I kind of knew that when I wanted to go to college I kind of wanted to do something with chemistry so I kind of had that in mind but I also took AP calculus just because you know I also want to do something calculus kind of goes hand in hand with sciencey stuff um, so it's kind of like I just kind of tailored my academics a little bit towards what I want to major in so kind of like a little better um, applicant, I would say, but again, you don't have to do that. I just did that. Um, I also took like the SAT subject test for chemistry and for uh, math too, I think. So then just kind of making it like kind of showing that you are kind of dedicated to what you want to learn in, I would say. But also one really big thing is to do some extracurriculars. Um, my one friend, he was the probably the smartest man I've ever met in my life. And he only ever played clarinet. And which it's an extracurricular, but it wasn't like, it was just clarinet. And I mean, not sorry for the people who actually play clarinet out there, um, but he just ever played clarinet. And then he kind of had a hard time with applica <laughs> application and applications and like uh, getting into colleges. <laughs> um, so I would just say to really work on some extra extracurriculars. I was in like, I was on a, doing a cross country. I also played tuba. I um, it was in student council. I mean, don't have to do all of those kind of work on some extracurriculars. So that's a really good advice. I would say is just make sure that you are a, uh, the oh, holistic, that's the word. I haven't said that word in so long, um, but holistic, because like, Berkeley kind of has a holistic view of everything. So it is academics, but it's not just academics or just really, you know, what your grades are your, and your GPA. It's academic, but it's also extracurriculars and how you get back to the community, volunteering you know, and, and all these uh, things, so like a nice holistic view of all of it. So that's just my advice is definitely extracurriculars. Yeah, great advice. And yeah, Berkeley just definitely wants to see you getting involved and kind of like following your passions. And you can follow your passions academically or, you know, playing the clarinet or playing, you know, anything. Um, so just kind of follow your passions. Um, but great answer and great advice. So our next question um, was from Zachary and Zachary asked, would you describe Cal in general and the College of Engineering as more competitive or more collaborative? Um, also, what is student stress level uh, like on campus? So Stacy, you can take that. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'm actually, I didn't mention this on the tour, but I'm actually on the pre-medical track. So with being a bio major, I'm also like in a, a lot of courses that have a lot of pre-med students. And um, pre-med students have this notorious reputation for some reason of being super competitive. But I mean, from my experience at Berkeley, I really don't think that's true because um, 
in these classes, it's like, we're always all trying to like ask each other for help and all trying to like study together. For example, I don't think there's been a single class where someone hasn't like reached out to me uh, and saying like, oh, I saw you on the like um, class ro uh, roster. Do you want to make a group chat with like the people we know and then like totally just like study together? That's always happened in almost every single class like after my first semester of freshman year. And even the upperclassmen are always so willing. Like I've probably learned the most about, you know, particular classes in terms of my study skills and like all of that and professors in general from my upperclassmen friends. And so it's like this interweaving and like even at the College of Engineering, I have friends who are in these large, like 2000 people CS courses, right? And they always like, there's these things called homework parties, which is where students kind of just like all collaborate to like finish the homework together and, you know, really build off of each other. So it's like the curriculum really builds these collaborative spaces, you know, in terms of like workshops, in terms of, you know, homework parties, in terms of like study groups to ensure that you're really communicating with the students around you, around you and rather having that competitive mindset you're really collaborating with them to ensure that you thrive the most in the environment and you know going on to stress i don't think there's a single college that isn't stressful at all because you know we're you know in college is a time where you're not only you know studying and like finding your passion but you're also learning a lot about yourself and you know all of that together can be stressful at times however you know like uc berkeley definitely has those resources available that are just in your grasp to ensure that you feel welcome in this community as well as you have the necessary tools to um get help in classes as well as to get help in terms of like all aspects of your life Awesome. Yeah, great answer. All right. And so thank you to everyone that has sent in questions. We're actually getting towards the end of our virtual visit. Um, so I did want to ask you both a um, really great question that we've actually gotten from some of our attendees, um, which basically is what made you choose Berkeley? So why Berkeley? What's what drew you here and kind of what kept you here? So Casey, you can start. Yes, I can definitely talk about this question and just a little, I always mention this, but my sister and mom are in this story and my sister's currently there. My mom's currently over there, so they're going to hear it and they always love to hear it. But my, I have a twin sister and ever since I was born, we have been in a, or ever since we were born, we've been in a competition of who is the better twin. So if I get an A, she gets an A plus. If I, if I, anything I did, she would always just barely outdo me. So when you're applying to colleges, I applied to Berkeley and I was waitlist. I was very sad and she got into UCLA which is number two public university and so I I got in off the waitlist I was like I'm going to number one public university haha ha. so like, I finally beat her so that's like that was one really big thing is I, beat, I finally beat my sister at something but so I came to Berkeley and the reason that I decided to stay was just the spirit um, everyone on campus, everyone yells go bears. Actually down here, um, I'm actually, because I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles or in Long Beach, I was just riding my bike on a bike trail and this one guy had a um, a cow, like what onesie, like a bike, you know, compression. Um, and he was wearing, it just, just, just said cow. And I was wearing this like a little a, a Berkeley shirt. And as he flew past me, he goes, go bears. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not even in Berkeley. So yeah, but just the spirit that the school has, I mean, on and off campus, that was just one thing that just really like stuck with me. Um, and also the fact that it is within the state of California because my mom's like, you're going to an in-state school because I can't afford out-state. I'm like, okay, mom, you got it. But I went really far away, about 400 miles, give or take, from home. So that she still is within the state with me, but just, just a little bit far away. Um, but yes, that's the reason I decided to come to Berkeley. And that's also kind of the reason why I stayed. Um, I could have had the option to graduate in like three years or maybe like 3.5, but I was like, oh, heck no. I'm, I'm going to stay all four years because I want to stay here as long as possible. Even... I'm going to be giving tours when I'm 80. Like, I'm just going to be I'm walking my little cane around campus and going, I remember when there was a pandemic. I mean, I'm going to be one of those people. But that's why that's one of the reasons I love Berkeley and why I stay. And just it's definitely the school spirit. School spirit. I mean, for, like, for Christ's sake, I have like a neon cow sign, like school spirit. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, I totally agree with what he's saying. Like, I came to... Um, Cal. So I went to a really small school, as we know. And so when I went to Cal, I actually visited during an event called Cal Day. If you're not, uh, if you don't know what Cal Day is, basically an event that's usually in like April where the entire campus is opened and all these visitors are out and um, there's like all these tents everywhere about like programs in Berkeley and then there's like six Oskis just running around everywhere and then like the band, the cheer team is all performing. And I saw this and I was like, 
this is what I want to be surrounded by. And like all the students were in blue and gold. It was one great day. And you know, my school wasn't even big enough to have a full football team. And so I really wanted this spirited place. And I came here and that's exactly what I got. Um, I was super overwhelmed at first, but then I joined this dance group of around 60 students that became my family who I like, you know, went to SF with, who I studied with, who I danced with, who I just like vented to. They became like, my my group and I felt like I'd never had a friend group before coming to Cal and so what's amazing about this school is that you get this large student body where you meet new people every single day who are just down to earth motivated amazing people in general you meet them in your classes you meet them walking to classes but you can also return to that friend group, that family, and everyone in the school has a family. There's, you know, 36,000 students, right? Um, and so you get that, that both of those environments coming to this school every single day. And it's so, it makes me so grateful. And, you know, it's just, you can't say um, in a lot of places that you meet such phenomenal students. Like it's, it's just, I'm grateful every single day. And it's actually the reason why I'm a tour guide. It's because I want to share just how amazing these students are that you do meet at this school. Awesome. Well, thank you both for your wonderful words. I definitely agree wholeheartedly with all those sentiments. Um, and I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us first and foremost and share with you some ways that you can contact us. So let's see, let's see, my screen sharing is not quite working. Um, hold on just one moment. Sorry. I love the sign, Casey. Brilliant. Thank you. I just have to try to show it off a little bit more while we're waiting for this lovely technical difficulties. Again, very spirited. Love it all. Casey, do you think you could share actually our um, contact resources for everyone? Some Zoom technical difficulties. Sorry, everybody. All right, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. So for everyone watching, here's some ways that you can contact us. So feel free to first and foremost, follow us on um, Instagram and Twitter at visit UC Berkeley. You can also email tour at berkeley.edu with any additional questions that you have. If you've sent someone something in today and it didn't get answered, a student campus ambassador will answer that question for you over that email. We also have a Bear Talk blog where our ambassadors get to blog about anything they want to, their favorite experiences and memories at Berkeley, what it's like to be a student. So feel free to check that out. And then this session was recorded, but a different recorded engineering visit is available on our website at visit.berkeley.edu, as well as our general campus um, virtual visit that gives you more um, general information about the campus. And I also wanted to invite you to look at our, um, the URLs down below for 150 years of women at Berkeley, where we celebrate the legacy of women and, um, and how women have made Berkeley what it is today, as well as our chancellor's message about standing together during these exceptionally difficult times and any fall instruction updates that you're wondering about for this fall, um, you know, how we're going to be running classes and housing and everything like that. And if you are curious about more information about engineering specifically, you can feel free to go to the engineering website at engineering.berkeley.edu and they have a, you know, a plethora of information for you to explore there as well. So again, thank you everyone for joining us and we will send you off with a Go Bears on three. So one, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears! Thank you everyone. Have a great day.